Good morning, guys. It is day three of my little three-day challenge, photographing the same bottle of perfume with three different sets of lighting scenarios. Day one was all my studio strobes. Day two was just speed lights. And today, biggest challenge of them all, ambient light only. Yeah, this one's going to be a little more difficult. And the biggest challenge, I think, is... Being that we have a glass bottle, we have got roundness to the whole thing. We got that ball on the top. We got the chrome cylinder in the middle. It's a lot of reflections that we've had to control the last couple of days. A lot of that has been ambient light that I've been trying to keep out to control the reflections that it causes. And now I need that ambient light to actually light the product. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but hey, I'm up for it. Hopefully you guys are along for the ride and... I think today's photo is going to look a little bit different, but hopefully it will look awesome. Now guys, one of the biggest challenges to doing ambient light only is that if I'm going to use a window or, you know, somehow light is coming into my studio, I am at the mercy of what that light is doing. If it's a sunny day, the light is gonna be different quality than if it's an overcast day. If I do it in the morning, it's gonna be different than if I do it in the evening because that sun is moving and things are changing. Now, one problem that you may have is if it's a partly sunny day and the sun is coming in and out of the clouds. So for a moment, you've got this beautiful light, but then the cloud cover comes over and it changes on you. That's gonna change the quality of light. It's gonna change the exposure. Good news is today, there's hardly any clouds in the sky, so the light should be consistent other than the fact that it's moving. I don't think we're going to spend that much time doing this, so over the course of the time that we're taking this photograph, I don't think the light will change much. This is not a north-facing window, but it is a northeast-facing window, and it's fairly soft. It should be decent. So I think the light quality at the moment is going to be just fine. Now let me show you from this angle what's happening here. There's my big window. It's lighting up the same side of the bottle that we've been lighting things from the last two days, but that same light is hitting my background. Before, when I had studio strobes, I was able to separate those two lights, light the perfume bottle with one light and light the background with a separate light. So that may be a little tricky to achieve the same type of look on our background, but somehow we've got to put something back there that will cast a shadow or create some kind of excitement or interest that our background doesn't look dull. But before we tackle that, let's make sure the light on the bottle looks good. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this uh, video camera in the right place so that you can see the bottle and the reflections that it casts just from the window itself. And then I think I'm going to put the parchment paper back in front of it so that we get a clean highlight. And uh, I'll show you how I do that right now. Can you guys see how on this chrome right here, kind of green, and my neighbor's house is yellow, you're literally getting a reflection of that. But a specular highlight, which is what that is, is a direct reflection of the light source. In this case, our light source is the window. You're getting an exact reflection of that window. So I'm going to put the parchment paper on this side and try to clean that up. Yeah, much, much nicer. Okay, so now I got the parchment paper hanging on the side in between the window and my subject. Makes a nice, clean highlight on that one side. Definitely took my exposure down, but we'll deal with the exposure here in a little bit. I think exposure is not going to be an issue whatsoever, but we'll deal with it. But it didn't knock the light down. Now, obviously, it didn't knock the light level down on the background, which may play into our favor. I'm going to put some kind of fill card on this other side, just like we've been doing the last couple of days, so I get a nice highlight on the other side, and we may be ready for a first photograph. All right, so I've added the fill card on the left side, and let me see if I can show you this. I'm seeing this through the camera. Right through the middle is a reflection. That's a reflection off the window in the back of the room. So I'm going to have to hold some kind of black card and literally block that. The other thing, and it's hard to see in this shot, but on the back side, back on over here, I'm actually seeing a reflection of that 
window, which is very green. I may move that black background in a way that will block that and will control that highlight or that reflection. So the reflection down the middle right through the uh, logo and then that green reflection on the back and we might have it under control. Okay, let me show you what I did with the background. I don't know how easy this is gonna be to see. I've actually turned the background so it is at an angle to the set. This side of the background is closer to the set than the right side. Maybe you can see it like that. That has cleaned up that reflection on the back side that was coming from this window over here. I think I'm ready to go because I think I'm going to just hold up a black card to take care of that reflection in the front. But the first thing I want to do here, guys, is I need to come up with the exposure. And I'm going to put a gray card in here to get my exposure off of. I'm going to leave my ISO at 100. I might have got switched to 125 yesterday. Hmm. How'd that happen? And let's take a meter reading. Okay, 100 ISO, I get five seconds at F8. I think I'm actually gonna bump the ISO to 400, which gets me to just over a second at F8. I think I can handle it one second exposure at F8. My initial meter reading, one second at F8. I'm also gonna do a custom white balance. Now, the reason I'm gonna do that is because when I was doing studio strobes or speed lights, they were balanced for daylight. And I just had the white balance set on daylight in my camera, and that seems to be very accurate. This, however, open sky light coming through a window with all this reflections of green and yellow from the house next door bouncing around, who knows what the white balance is. So I'm gonna do a custom white balance, set it for that, and we should be good. I'm not a big fan of auto white balance, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it's just the simple, possibility that the camera might adjust as we go. As the light changes, the camera makes different adjustments, and then I've got a different white balance setting on every frame, and I don't want that. If I'm a little bit off, I want to be able to simply correct, and it be the same correction for every shot. So let's do a cu custom white balance and take the first shot. Took me a second there to remember how to custom white balance. But I've set the custom white balance. Now we're gonna take the shot. Last thing I wanna tell you guys, little over a one second exposure. So I've put it on a self timer because I promise you when you push that button, if you do not have a self timer to let the camera settle, even pushing the button can put a little bit of motion into it. And with a second, we definitely could get some blur. Product photography, we can't have that at all. It's gotta be sharp as a tack. 200 millimeter lens is only gonna ex you know, accentuate that. So I've put it on a timer. Let's take the first shot. Good news, I think, is it is definitely overexposed, which means we can shorten that exposure a little bit. Question is how much overexposed is that? I'm gonna say a stop. I've knocked it down to a third of a second at f8, and I think the exposure's about right. Yeah, I'm not unhappy with the exposure. I think that's right. The white balance to me seems a touch on the green side, but it's awfully close as well. And I think that that's gonna be an easy fix in post. Again, I'm not trying to lean on a crutch or anything. The white balance is very close, and it's gonna be consistent from shot to shot. Um, I've left the ISO at 400. I was tempted to knock that down, but with this camera, I don't have any problem shooting at 400. The quality will be fine. My only concern now is the background. It is a little on the blah side. Let me, you know, the background's a little dull back there. Let me see if I can get a mirror, maybe reflect some kind of streak across the back or something. I don't know, we'll see. Let's try something. All right, guys, let me show you what I have done. And I think it's a little cleaner. I'm gonna brainstorm a little bit more to see what I can come up with. But what I have done, I put this white card in the window, and what that's doing is knocking light off my background. Hasn't really affected the subject, but it's knocking light off the, the black paper back here, which is making the paper go darker, making the whole image look a little more moody and, and contrast. The other thing that I did, I've got a mirror right here, um, trying to get a little bit of reflection and knock it off, knock a like a streak of light or something on the background. It's just not strong enough to really make a difference. So that's not really helping. The other thing I'm doing is I'm holding up the black card to control that reflection in the front of the chrome. And let me show you 
kind of how that looks when we're actually taking the exposure. Product photography is all about the reflections and controlling it, without a doubt. Whatever the surface of the subject is that you're working with, it's all about the reflections. So I think we've got that under control. I am going to pull these images into the computer, do a little more brainstorming on what I can and can't do with that background, and we'll almost be finished here. Here, I think, is my workaround. I'm going to take this photo again, and I think this is going to be my workaround for the background because I don't have any way to control that light on the background without significantly changing the light on my subject. Now, that might be partly my fault because I painted myself into a corner by shooting on this side of the room. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the photograph again, correct exposure, then I am going to overexpose it significantly so that I have a lighter area of the background, like overexpose, that black background at the bottom will be more of a gray. And then I'm going to put the two images together, gradate off the back, and kind of mimic what we did before. Hopefully that will work. So there's my first exposure, second. Okay guys, thanks for watching as always. My furlough's almost over. This is probably the last video that I am going to post before I go back to work next week. Although we'll see what happens this week. And I actually have a, an idea, but whether I'll get it done or not, I don't know. But I want to thank you guys for hanging with me for the last 22 weeks. It has been quite a run, and I have enjoyed it. Although not being certain where you're going to work and things like that is not exactly fun. But I did enjoy producing these videos. I look forward to doing more for sure. Thank you for hanging around with these uh, little product challenges with the different lighting. If you have comments, questions, complaints, please leave them in the section below. If you could subscribe if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate that. I always appreciate the thumbs up. And as always, thank you guys so much for your support and for watching my videos. I will see you very soon. Have a great day.